have yet to succeed in casting one. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Nice to know. You save We're your on. fails for Bane. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. We're just oh. trying to plan for our heist. <laughs> not going well <laughs> god a rebellion has become a heist now i don't know what that says <laughs> yeah like cat kind of downplaying it at this point no i never said rebellion i said heist um, <laughs> um hi everybody welcome along to the latest episode of rise of the forsaken here at d8 dungeon uh we are playing or continuing play of chapter 17 uh part two and we we'll do our usual housekeeping at the top of the uh at the top of this episode and uh, then we're going to be diving straight back into it we've already rolled for our recap and the delightful diara will be filling us in in exactly what happened last time around in case you missed it um important thing to note that the all the videos are available over on our youtube channel uh, if you want to uh check those out you can um uh quickly going to mention our affiliate link with the rook and the raven uh if you are a dm or a player or a lover of ttrpgs or perhaps you know somebody who loves ttrpgs mm -hmm. and they need a notebook uh, planner to help with their campaign to help track their character development and stats then you can uh Head on over to the Rook and the Raven. You can customize a notebook to your heart's content. Um, and if you use the code D8 Dungeon at checkout, you will get 15% off that order. And if you're in Ireland, the UK or Europe, they now ship from Ireland. So nice and simple and easy delivery. Obviously, if you're in the US or Canada or the rest of the world, it'll come from a place that's close to you too. But there's that too. Um, I'm going to very quickly mention that uh, this Friday uh, we will not be running one shot nightstand. Uh, I suppose we kind of are. We're doing seven one shot nightstands uh, <laughs> back to back. Um, but uh, this weekend, um, the D8 Dungeon crew are organizing a uh, two day event a fundraiser in aid of Planned Parenthood uh, because I think it's safe to say that everybody here supports reproductive rights um and choice absolutely fucking matters and uh given the the battle and the ongoing battle here in this country uh and the shitty news coming out of the us uh, a couple of weeks ago uh we felt it pertinent and important and right to support uh our friends in the us uh in the fight to reinstate reproductive rights um so we are organizing a fundraiser for planned parenthood this weekend with seven dms um running different games Friday and Saturday. All proceeds are going directly to Planned Parenthood. Um, there are prizes to be won throughout the weekend. There is the potential uh, for mayhem and chaos uh, as the different DMs are going to be, or some of us are going to be allowing uh, your donations to influence the game. Um, uh, I will be running a sexy Battle Wizards uh, game on Friday night. Uh, and you'll recognize some familiar faces and voices as our sexy battle wizards. Uh, but your donations will give inspiration to the players. They'll allow me to cast random world magic into the crowd at the rock metal slash space synth arcane concert slash Burning Man <laughs> festival type thing that we're stealing. And uh, uh, there'll be a few other hijinks and a possibility of me wearing an awful, awful wizard's cloak. Um, an awful, awful, awful one for the whole stream. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's taking place Friday and Saturday. Uh, Friday from quarter past three and Homebrew Ben from Homebrew. I always call him Homebrew Ben. Ben <laughs> from Homebrew Quest. Ben from Homebrew Quest is going to be kicking off the the, the two day hey. event. So uh, very much looking forward to that. And we've players from uh, all over the world joining us. Um, so it's going to be an absolute blast. And uh, even if you even even if you're not in a position to donate, uh, do come along, join us in chat. You know, keep everyone's spirits and energy up. And uh, a re a share, a retweet, a like, uh, all really helps the the event reach more people. And the possibility of our goal is a thousand dollars already made $70 today and we, we only launched it today the cape 
cloak wizard thing does not go on unless we've made five hundred dollars before my game. Um, I so think that's very steep. I, I think that's them. very fair. We did. Sorry, excuse me. We raised five hundred and fifty dollars in a three-hour session for the Irish Cancer Society. So you have double the time to raise that much money, Fiona Money. Uh, oh, just saying. Just saying. Just so. me. Uh, just you, just you <laughs> single-handedly. Just me. Uh, um, the rest of us. Will oh, an anonymous on. donor has donated five hundred euro. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not me. <laughs> Can I have that money? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we are very much looking forward. Uh, very much looking forward to that. Um, I think that's everything. I think it's time to recap. Do a recap. And I think it's time to get into Yeah, something that I'm genuinely apprehensive about. Um <laughs> so yeah. Um Eilish Dyer, why don't you take us away? Okay. Diary. It has been a very long road to Cove. After Umbra was absolutely decimated by lightning. We struggled to revive him. I have never not been able to heal any of the family before, so that was rough. Mooney couldn't heal him either. And then when we thought all hope was lost, we figured he had still got a very slight pulse. So we brought him back to the pub and Basically, he was awake, but not awake. Um, so then we were all starting to plan the funeral. And <laughs> there was a commotion downstairs. Mooney went to see what happened and ended up organizing some kind of rebellion. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, it turns out that there has been an underground revolution happening in Cove for quite some time. And we are basically now going back to help. Um, our, lovely, our lovely friends are coming too on a boat. There's going to be 64 of them. But before they get there, we have to create a, a diversion to make sure that they can make it to the harbour safely. Um, Rendell has given us the master logs that Targal asked, no, that Farron asked for. So, hopefully, if we can keep him in his house, he won't notice the army coming to destroy him. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Umbra had a near death experience. Um, he met his other mom. It's a bit complicated, so I'm not going to get into it now. <laughs> But she basically told him that we are tears in the world. And if we come into contact with these tears, the world will end. So no biggie, except Reggie can't come into contact with Farron or I think the world might end. So we have to try and keep him away from Farron but also give Farron the book while also creating a distraction and rallying the townsfolk in Cove and Umbra's still unconscious. So yeah. Hope you're well. XOXO. <laughs> <laughs> it, it started to get very Lizzie McGuire there towards the end. Uh... You, forgot the the you forgot the most important part of the last episode. We have six health potions. Yay. No, no. <laughs> that's not the most important part. Well, that's the most important part. You should know of all people. Me? Regiment scored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got a little kissy kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dad, I was <laughs> that kid is going to not. What, what, was, what, was, in, what was his name? Marlon. 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 He's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Eric all over again. No. Uh, My heart's not able. <laughs> I'm very nervous. I'm so My nervous, team. lads. I've never been as nervous for one of these before. 
and look at Declan's face, that's increasing my anxiety. <laughs> just, right. just, just generally, or like one no, of my no. favorite lines from this from this was my notes last time was Umbra and Brassica are sassing back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brassabra. Uh, Brassabra, yeah. Brassabra. 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 So, yeah. Brassabra. That's all. That's all my notes. Yay! Good job. Thanks so much. Thanks for uh, the revolution. Yeah. yeah, you can take your inspiration. Remember, use it in the session or lose it in the session. Oh, it uh, will be. <laughs> um, and just for just for folks watching, so we um, so it's kind of clear. Um, I am utilizing clocks for for this session. So there are a couple of different events that are, are happening all at the one time. And at a later date in DM notes, I might talk about these clocks. Uh, it was actually James who kind of put me onto them in Thanks, what was that James. system? Necro Thanks, Necronopolis. Necro he introduced Necronopolis, you to clocks. Yeah. <laughs> Necronopolis, yeah. Um, and um yeah, it, it really helps in terms of planning out kind of larger kind of scale events. I've done these for Romance in the Dungeon already in uh, at the start of season two with the attack on Tezra. Um So it works. And there are there are several clocks uh, running uh, behind the behind the scenes here. So I'll be keeping track of these different things. Uh, the only one that I've made the players aware of is the ship's clock. And uh, that the is counting one. the only one. Yeah. And there are several Um in total, there are five clocks running. Um, what the fuck? And, if we uh, get um, if we get like a few more donations, do we get some help? <laughs> I mean, <sighs> hang on a second. <laughs> but for the fact that came from you, Fiona, and I know you're probably sitting there with your card out already. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I'd rather not throw the advantage disadvantage game around in what is something that is quite a hefty uh, situation. Um, but I tell you what, um, there's one clock in particular that you really don't want triggering. And for every for every yeah do you know because yeah because I, I i kind of wanted to trigger because it's it's going to be devastating um oh. so it's not like you it's link just gonna put that link in there there there's yeah, a little there's a, there's link, a link there. The, the there i tell you what if we if we get and i'm not saying 50 euro from everybody but if we make 50 euro i will roll whatever that clock is at a disadvantage that's that's a tenor each come on um, <laughs> Jesus Christ! That no, I, I, do not do. To five of you, do not do that anonymous thing. That's not nice. <laughs> Even though it's for charity, that's not nice. <laughs> I should have made it higher. Sixty. It's Sixty. No, you no, heard you it here no, first, you folks. Declan hates yeah. charity. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He um, says charity starts at home. That's what he says all the time. <laughs> <laughs> charity starts in Cove. Charity starts in Cove. So yeah, I will. Um, and um, yeah, I will figure. I will. I will sort that out. So it was at seventy dollars before we started. So if okay. we hit one hundred and twenty dollars um, before the clock uh, fills in. Uh, okay. I will allow it to to do whatever that specific, and I promise you, I will not. I won't change the clock. It, it's to do. It is to do with the ship, but um, I won't. Uh, I won't. I won't give you those details. Are, is everybody good to start? Yes. No. Okay. Um, uh, right. Okay. Um, day has has broken um, and. Mooney, Diara, Regiment, and Nulra, as as the four of you approach the the walled gates of Cove, uh, you see the two large, heavy wooden doors just drawn open slowly, and the sky is a heavy, burnt, and grey orange. There's even though 
the the light uh, from dawn uh, is kind of rippling across the horizon it is very overcast and it was like that that overcast that mist that that drizzle was like that when you first arrived cove as well and you kind of learned that generally here along the coast of Inishtarug, it this is the weather kind of pretty much 24 7 um as you as you approach you heard uh you heard someone calling out that the they see you you've arrived you're back uh tell Ferrin. and as the as your horses draw closer standing there in the uh in the entrance uh, in the gateway uh, across the threshold from the road into the the village a man and a woman are standing there and uh, the woman is kind of, she seems to be kind of swinging an axe in one hand, but just kind of just twirling it. Um, and the man just holds a hand out for the four of you to stop. We stop. <clears throat> Mr. Ferrin's wanting a word with the, the lot is. Is there not five? There was five. And he just <clears throat> and spits on the ground. Charming. He's not going to like that. Uh, we weren't too fond of it either, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the woman actually snorts uh, a laughter. Uh Well, your horses, you can leave them there. Uh, well, we, we we can make use of them, you know, re replace the ones. Uh, and there's what always food. Can we replace them? Can we not keep them? I've gone awfully attached to this horse. His name's Gary. <laughs> the woman, uh, she walks right up... Uh, towards you, Mooney. Um, and as she kind of gets closer, you you hadn't kind of pegged them for a moment. These are the two that pursued you and Tilly <gasps> through the woods. Oh, it's yourself, or are you? I am positively <laughs> glowing. <laughs> and she Sucker punches you into the guts. Oh, uh, no! No! For a 17. Um, a 17 to hit? 17 no. to hit, yeah. No, uh, I don't like that. Uh, no! Take two bludgeoning damage. Oh! Are Nairobi, we will be like straight off her horse and over beside Mooney, standing like one foot in front of Mooney, right up on top of this bitch. Not doing anything. Her hands are not touching anything. <laughs> But she's just standing there. I would like to do the same, but on my horse. <laughs> uh, the the guy uh, kind of puts himself between. Well, Nora, he's he's doing the same thing that you're kind of doing. So the two of you are almost kind of like chest to chest. What height is he? Uh, he's like you're you're taller than him. He's only like six three. Okay. So he has uh, to look up at me. I'm gonna look down at him. He shoulders your one back, and he's like. <sighs> She's got a temper, uh, and to be fair, your sister kind of had a comment as well there. What did I do? Mooney? You just lassoed Mooney. me like a car and called me a big bitch, and now you're oh. hitting me. Mooney, are these the two that you, you buried underground? I as Via Murphy, I think they said the name Suave, oh. but it's hard to make them out when they've got a gob full of dirt. How long did it take you guys to dig back out? Ferrin, and he just gestures with uh, his head, like he just kind of nods towards the house. Um, and he he grabs uh, the woman by the shoulder and he kind of just marches her out in front. Um, go. Okay, all that aside, I really didn't mean it. That I said we got quite attached to the horses. Do you think we could leave them at the stables before we go? Sure, I, 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 I'll, I'll give him, 
a, a good brush while he's at it and maybe a handful of apples as well. That, no. Yeah. I mean, we leave him at the No, state. we'll take care of that. You have things to be doing with uh, on, Mooney. Mr. Fern and the man doesn't like to be kept waiting. All right, okay. I'll take Mooney by the elbow and just kind of very, guide very her away. Get off the horse. <laughs> <laughs> the, what the hell? <laughs> just saw it, huh? Yeah, I just saw it. Uh, thanks, everybody. I... <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you all lovely giving to charity? Oh, my God. <laughs> Who's a tale of D20s? $60. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Thank Legend. you. Legends. That's what they Thank are. Thank you, guys. And then a 20 and a 10. Oh, my goodness. I tried to donate and it wouldn't let me. Did you say something bold in the comments? It doesn't let you if you say something bold in the comments. Oh, that maybe, maybe that was a... <laughs> oh, dear. I'll try it again. There's no room for expletives in charity. Oh, God. Um, with with that, uh, the the four of you are are kind of are led through the gates the uh the woman kind of leading you towards the house um Ferran's house the the former mayor's house uh here in cove and as you as you were, as you kind of make your way through the village everybody give me perception checks oh, baby. <clears throat> two men uh just uh, as we uh, as you're being led away two men kind of uh, run up towards the the fellow who is walking with you, uh, and he gestures at the horses, and they are they're taken away. The horses are led away. Nineteen. Okay. Seventeen. Twenty-one. Uh, two. <laughs> okay. Um. Three of you. Uh, <laughs> clock. <laughs> it's a village, right? This is a village. Um. It's it's early in the morning. It should be a lot busier than this. Like, there would be people out and getting ready for the day. No, even here in Cove, even when you were, um, even when you first arrived here, and it, like Cove isn't in any great shape, but there was still activity. There were still villagers going about their business, tending to work and wares, heading down towards the the little dock and whatnot. You don't see anybody. Are the guys still with us? Yeah, you're being led by uh, that that man and woman. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, Dyer is going to turn to Nora and just kind of whisper over her shoulder, "Where is everyone?" I don't know. It's creeping me out a little bit. You are. Approaching the house when you see, again, there are two people standing outside, um, both with uh, swords down by their sides, like just down at their kind of hips. One reaches for the door and opens it, and the woman kind of stands off to one side and gives a half curtsy and bow and gestures for you to to head in. Do we recognize her from last time? Oh, the, this is your one Vera, sorry. Your, yeah, okay. this is the one that uh, Nolra buried. Mooney Not Nolra, sorry. Mooney, uh, no, Mooney, uh, Mooney buried. Um, Nolra is going to hold back a retort in, that was building in her <laughs> mouth. And she's going to walk ahead of the others and make her way in. Everybody's following? Yeah. Yeah. Many looks back at her horse sadly. No, oh, poor Gary. The as you step inside, um, Nulra and the others kind of follow behind you. the The door is closed, and you can hear uh, you can hear sounds of activity somewhere within the house. And all of you pick up on the faint aroma of. It's it smells like bacon, like it smells like food being cooked. 
and uh, you just hear uh, a voice call out from uh, a room just a little bit up the corridor and there's a stairs in front of you and it's coming kind of from behind the stairs and up a, up a doorway or up, a, up the, sorry, up the hallway and uh, coming from an open doorway. Uh, breakfast is served then. Oh, great. Can see you, you recognize the voice as Farron. Are we, can he see us yet? No. You said it smelled like bacon, yes? Yeah. Nora's going to pause for a second and look back at the others and just, like, panically whisper, do not eat anything. But I'm starving. Do not eat anything. And she's going to continue on. It's people bacon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ruin the surprise, Diara. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Anyway. You're following? Mm-hmm. As you move through the the open area here in the house, and like I said, there's a there's doorways off to your left and your right, and there's a stairwell in front of you. But the 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 voice came from just back down the corridor, and as the four of you shuffle down towards it, Nolra, you you're the first to see it, and it's a the last time you looked to be in what what was being clearly used as a mess hall or uh, a space for Farron and his crew to have their meals. This looks this looks like a room. This looks like a dining room. This looks like it's what it's supposed to have been used for. The wallpaper is faded and torn. There's broken shelves um, and a smashed cabinet in the corner. But there is a table and as scratched and as banged up as it looks, it has been laid very neatly, um, very delicately. And there are five empty chairs around it, set at the head of the table, and immediately to their left, you see Ferrin, Tilly, and Richter. Are they alive? Both look like they've had the living daylights kicked out of them. Tilly looks up and sees the four of you and her eyes kind of glisten with tears. Richter doesn't respond. But he's alive. That he looks. Does he? Yeah. Four of you. Getting your book approved more difficult than we thought. Bless. Well, if he's had to lose anybody, I'm... At least it was the prissy one. Please. Take a seat. Right, Nora's gonna, yeah, she's going to dig his nails into his own palms. And uh, give a really evil stare, because it's the most you can do right now. And then sl- stare at the bacon, and then back at him. <laughs> <laughs> and sit down. Yeah, Nora would dig her hand into the, the top of the chair. Splintering the wood a little bit. Pull it out and sit down. Is the food laid out at the table? There's a, there's a few bits and pieces. Uh, kind of, there. there's a few... Uh, there is slices of cold meat and uh, and bread and fruit and stuff like that, but there is in the center of the the table there is uh, a large silver tray with a cover over it. Oh God, it's a head! You <laughs> kitty. <laughs> then I will make her way over, and she'll sit beside Tilly if she can. Uh, so. Tilly is immediately to Farron's left, and then you've Richter beside her, so you can sit beside Richter if you wish. I'll sit beside Richter. Okay. As the the four of you take their seats, uh, Farron kind of uh, looks up. Perhaps, you know, given your unfortunate news, we we take a moment to reflect. Maybe even offer up a prayer. I could lead that if you want. 
I think it best we hear from and he points straight uh, at you, Nolra. I'm I'm not really I, I don't I'm not really into that stuff. Oh, even for your own brother. Even for my own brother, yeah. I do give a Sebastian prayer. <laughs> See, family is very important. It's the fabric of our society, isn't it? It's why we do the things that we do. It's a bit of a family affair here in Cove. We're all one little family. And Tilly starts to sob. No. And you see, family, they know how to, they know how to get you where it really hurts, don't they? They can they can take so many things for granted. I bet I bet you all thought about that after you lost Umbra, all the all the things that you wanted to say to him, all the things you wanted to apologize for. Well you're not gonna get that chance now, obviously. He knew. Uh, that's just what it lies we tell ourselves, isn't it? See, I like to protect my family. And if anything came between that bond, someone was to betray us. And Tilly just, it's the, the, the sobbing has become a full whimper. And you, Regiment. Nora and Dyer from where you're sitting, you you've a better vantage of her. Her eyes are red. Her eyes are red from crying. There's a valuable moment though in betrayal. You can really exercise a bit of thought around the whole thing. Send a message to the rest of your kin and ilk. Don't make the same mistake. But that's not really why we're here, is it? You owe me a book, as I believe. And uh, Farron just, he puts, uh, his index finger and his thumb and his mouth, he lets out just a little whistle. And two identical uh, twins, both half orc, uh, step in from uh, a small side door that leads to what you can see again Regiment Mooney, uh, Regiment Diara and Nalra into like a kitchen. It's like obviously this is where food would have been brought from. They as if they'd been waiting, step out and they grab Tilly and Richter's chairs and uh, begin to uh, pull them out of the room. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are they going? <laughs> well, we've to discuss private things, us lot, and they've already had their serving. So, you will get Tilly, as I promised, obviously, on delivery of what you had set out to do. But I think, I think we kind of maybe got off to a, a bit of a rocky start, we did. So how's about you explain what took you so long? And what happened to your 
brother. Um, I'm going to make this quick. There was an enchanted forest. We got lost. Lightning. Now, let's move on. Where are you for what you want? Give us what we want. Why do you care? Call me curious. Something must have happened if, you know, he met his maker. I nearly he, died. Yeah. Omber came to my rescue, okay? Do you need to know any more? Lightning kills tens of people every year. <laughs> That's an interesting fact. Anyway, I got lost in a forest and we got attacked by two big manticores and... You know, Nolra almost died, and our brother did. And your friends and were there. Then he takes Dude. the book, the journal out, written by that man that describes how he's hidden these manticores in a forest. She puts it on the table. I kind of stumbled in in a sort of secret, enchanted that this fella made to protect his pets. But they weren't really pets at all. They were big, massive monstrosity killing machines. Probably delayed us a wee bit. So. He's left here. Encountered an enchanted forest. Fought manticores and that's what killed your brother yeah uh, lightning give me a deception check Moni I think my deception's good um, come on baby deception 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 plus one it's not that good <laughs> Your DC is 16. <sighs> Perhaps I should have made myself a little bit clearer then. I don't fucking like being lied to. And the grunt of a farmer and his pig of a wife that I had collect you. Said all five of you were on the cart. Four of us and a dead body. That's interesting. They didn't mention one of you has been dead. You think they'd want to tell you that one of us had died <laughs> and see what your reaction is? So you were telling me measure, measured man you are. Sayara flashes her eyes at Reggie. Farron, just with a, a smile on his face, stands up. Leans across the table and reaches for the silver tray. On the cover. <laughs> and there's... When he pulls it back... Bacon? There are three severed heads. Three? <sighs> Mooney, you recognize Kristoff? Oh, <gasps> no! The man who collected you from the woods... And a woman, half elf, Nora, you you recall she was one of the people that gave you supplies. Fuck. How do the four of you react? Nora's Many gonna... screams. <laughs> 
Okay. Laura's going to put her, 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 slam her fists or her hands down on the table and stand up and just say, Diara, give him the book. We're going now. Um, in that moment, Diara, like, realization dawns on her that she left the book in the satchel on her horse. So she's going to look at Nora and just be like, uh, I'll go get it. It's just right outside with the horses. I'll have you escorted then. No problem. The rest of you can stay put um, until she's back. Reggie wouldn't recognise any of the heads, right? <laughs> you saw the, the woman, well, you might have been too interested in getting a water skin from the bag, but you would have been there when the woman and... The, when that woman and you would also... There. I mean, Christoph. Again, yeah. yeah Chris, well, Christoph, yeah. Sandwich man. Sandwich <laughs> man. Now we have to make a funeral platter of sandwiches for him. Oh, oh they're all egg and cucumber. <laughs> uh, excuse me, what's wrong with that? <laughs> this is a this is a quintessential funeral sandwich, isn't yeah, it? It's amazing. Oh, Love we're so Catholic. That's all I want. <laughs> um. <laughs> Dyer, as you go to leave, uh, Ferrin lets out kind of a, again, that sharp whistle. And from the, the hallway that you had entered, uh, an older looking man kind of approaches, um, kind of tanned leathery skin, and he's wearing uh, kind of rags um, that are kind of bundled together with ropes and half stitched properly and a little bit of armor. Uh, like leather hide armor kind of over his shoulders um, he as he as he kind of approaches he kind of lets out kind of a wheezy kind of breath and a smile and you see that his mouth is missing uh, most of its teeth um, and Ferrin just kind of looks at you nods and uh, he smiles um, and you get this kind of this almost toothless grin smiled back at you and what teeth he does have are yellow and black and rotting uh, in Beautiful. his mouth. Uh, he hobbles out uh, of the the dining room back into the hallway um, and out the door waiting for you to follow. Yeah, she follows. Can I lock eyes at Diara before she goes? Uh, yeah. And then look back. Just she wants to just check in real quick. As uh, Diara is led away, um, Ferran kind of sits back down and uh, well, I think you were all telling me exactly how the five of you arrived at Cashlon and got the book. And paint me a picture. I'm not too good at that either. And she's just going to sit back in the chair. I can make you a jar. What is it that you want to know? Like, what are you expecting us to say? I'm curious that one of you fucking died. And, uh,. Discretion was something we had talked about, and if any of this gets back to me, well, our deal might have to be altered somewhat. But pardon me, I don't think it's very discreet murder in three people. Probably just because you didn't like what they had to say. How do we know you're not going to do the same thing to us? Sometimes it seems safer just not to say anything around you. In case hmm. we say the wrong thing. And yet Even you continue to fucking talk. I know, but I just want to know. Like, what do you want us to say? I want you to tell me how you got the book. What just asked for? Diary yeah. did. She knows how to get things from people. 
bet she does. Well, she got your fucking book, didn't she? We'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. But, uh... While these were away, there was something interesting. I had a bit of a rummage. Had the lads go check out Tilly's hideout. And uh, he reaches down into the pocket of his coat. She seemed very occupied with this. And from his pocket, he pulls a glass vial and a, a shimmering, almost glittery liquid inside it. And you see, right before I had the lads take Kristoff's fucking head from his shoulders, she squealed that this belongs to ye. Hi, it does. And I'm wondering what exactly it actually fucking is. We've got no idea. And mum gave it to us as a wee present. The lad there that's followed Diara out is... Oh, well, he's in tune with the arcane. Reckons it's pretty powerful. And we've lost Emma. Oh, but we've two Aminos, so that's fun. Yay! Great. Hello! Um, uh, okay, do we want to take... Uh... Oh, there we go! Yay! Hey. Hey. You just rearrange. Get to work, James. <laughs> <laughs> While James does that, I'll it's my time to, to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, good news, we leveled up. <laughs> Fair and let us go. Everything's grand. Yeah, it was just a misunderstanding. <laughs> of those three, they weren't dead. They were just sitting below the table and they had like holes cut out where their heads go. <laughs> it was very fun. I was so, hold on, I was so nervous. Who was the third one? It was Christoph Henrietta. Who was the other one? No, um, I don't think it was Henrietta. It was someone who gave us supplies before we left Cove. That's her. Was it not no, the, one, of the, the one on the cart? That, one of the cart people? Oh, it was on the cart people. It was was it the cart man? The man, the man, the man, the cart man. Yeah, Henrietta was the name of the woman that gave us the supplies. Oh, so his okay. wife is still alive? No, I think they were brother and sister because Declan said they looked really alike. Oh, his siblings still alive? And then the guy, his wife, I think they were a couple, weren't they, that came to get us in the cart. Wow, I'm not using that dice. Yeah, get rid of it. Throw it away, Kat. Can't on, afford that. On a scale of one to breaking the suspense, how much did I break the suspense? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're grand. And everything is reorganized and everything is back as is. Yay. 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 Um, yeah, he... he puts the bottle down on the table um, and looks eagerly at the the three of you to explain exactly what is... I mean, he had said that his uh, his man, the fellow that is accompanying Dyer at the moment, is uh, somewhat uh, learned in the ways of magic and the arcane, and uh, it's not just a gift from your man, it's something else, that there is real power to this thing. He doesn't know what it is, and he's looking for an explanation. And uh, he's learned that it's years, and he learned that by more or less threatening Tilly and then killing Christoph. Um, are we still chatting to him? Uh, yeah. I'm actually going to, yeah, you are, but I'm going to cut over to Diara. Okay. Is there anything any of you want to do? Is there anything the three of you want to do at that point? Are uh, Richter and Tilly gone from the room? Yes. Yeah, they've been dragged away. Even tried away. I just no. I mean, I want to leave, but I don't think he's going to let us leave. So no, I'll just sit there and listen. You never asked. No. Oh well, I believe I said I announced we were going, but I was yeah, that's forbidden. Yeah, you're <laughs> Irish goodbye on it. On will Catagon Dugadie and Lehras Fern. Neil. 
Uh, no, she's just going to sit there listening to his bullshit. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> um, what did I, I didn't say anything. What? And Moody <laughs> and Regin, is there anything either of you would like to do? Action-wise? Or you... Action-wise, no. Just talking no. shite. Okay. Uh, Diara, you are... You're following this, this gentleman. Um, and I think at this stage, James, if you want to swap over to the other screens, we can have a look at. <gasps> That's what? definitely going oh. to need some rearrangement now as well. So bear with oh, us for yeah. one second, folks. <laughs> Declan, your microphone is doing it. We think it's used in a little bit of a, a feedback. Crackle. James said it could be a bit of a crackle. Oh my God, I'm, a, I'm the GM now. Um, wow. <laughs> that crackle happens when you talk for me. Uh, it's it? deck. It's Deccan for me. Because you're the only one who has the like the blue frame around them in meat. Sorry, everybody. This is this is minor technical. Uh, minor technical thing. If you mute yourself, Deck, then we can see if it stops. Cat, can we get some of your elevator music while we're waiting? No, 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 no. We're trying to check sound here. I can still, I can still hear it. I can, I can still, still hear it too. Yeah. yeah, I can still hear it too. I'm gonna mute me. I think it is you. Uh, it's Kat. Oh, it's Cat. Oh. Oh. Oh my goodness. Is it me? Mm -hmm. Am I the yeah. girl? Sure. <laughs> <Am> I? <laughs> I don't know what that could be. I don't know how to fix that if it is me. Um, it's not happening now. I would just, yeah, make sure cables are firmly seated. Did that fix it? Seems to. Yeah. What was it? Yeah, it's not happening. I think it's my. I think it might be my phone beside it. It's like throwing it <laughs> off. So I'll put my phone away because I can't hear it anymore. No, neither can I. I solved it. I'm the drama. No team. <laughs> the drama. <laughs> Wait, okay, go. Then. Timer. Timer. No, no timer. Pause the timer. <laughs> do, 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 now everybody's do, where do. they should be. Hooray. Yay. Boop, boop. Okay. Um, of the uh, of the five timers, three of them have uh, slots filled. They're not full. But they have slots filled. How many? I'm not telling you that. <laughs> no. Not even the boat. Um, Is one of them a timer for that bacon going cold? Because that's yeah, that's gonna be running out. <laughs> Come on, over, hurry up. <laughs> um, okay. As the uh, yeah, as the three of you are left, and apologies there for the the that that little. All good. All good. Mm -hmm. Um, Dyer, as I was saying, as you are as you are making your way out of the house and following this old man, you uh, you're being led straight down through the center of the village, and you pass uh, the well uh, here at the heart of the of Cove. And again, you, it hasn't been you know it has it, it, it's only been about fifteen minutes since probably pushing 20 since he kind of arrived and you were harassed by Ferran and his men uh, and then interrogated. But as you are, um, as you're moving through the, the village, you, you don't see any more or any other signs of activity. There, there's nobody around. Um, she's going to kind of walk quietly beside the man for a spell and then just kind of look around and then look at him and say do we miss something like is everyone taking a trip where this place was way busier the last time we were here <laughs> just uh, just a little bit of of a, a holiday Farron gave everybody on account of, you know, your success. Our success? Oh, 
getting the book back and all that. Isn't that what you were getting for Master Farron? Right. Didn't think a book would be reason to throw a celebration. Aye, well, he's a, a very given gentleman. That's true. That's true. So is there a party? Can't say. It's a surprise party? Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> uh, uh, good at that. Uh, uh, good at that. <laughs> 17. Ooh. He doesn't say anything. He kind of he actually looks away from you, Dara. Like he's like he's kind of stopping the conversation. Oh come on! I won't tell anybody. Promise. And his eyes drift to a small building Ooh. on your left. Just as you're kind of uh, as you pass the the B and B, you see it. it. It looks like a it looks like a little hut. It it actually kind of reminds you reminds you of the harbor master's office and quarters in Cashlam, but smaller. Mm-hmm. And his eyes drift at it. Give me a perception check. Oh no! Oh. Um. <laughs> Inspiration. Fourteen. It's a little difficult to say, but because he's like he's leading you, he hasn't stopped around. Like, he's he's continued walking, and he's kind of half dragging you, um, or at least he's not letting you. Dilly dally. Um, yeah, but you you kind of follow her, the line of his eyes, and you you're at, where they kind of linger, and you see that hut. You you see two large wooden wheels just sort of half sticking out from the back of the building. And a long metallic <gasps> tube. <gasps> like a cannon? And then okay. you hear horses neigh. Um... Let me just let me just please hold. <laughs> How far away from the house are we? From from Farron's house. You are um approximately and I'm never good at distances. Ten miles. No. Um <laughs> you it's are probably about 70 feet or so away 80 maybe okay I, and i'm still walking behind him uh, yeah, just kind of because you were A following his eye line you're kind of yeah. literally kind of half step behind him can i put my hand behind my back and point in the direction of Farron's house and say nora gave a cannon and send message. Give me a slight of hand check. <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> okay, I am going to roll. A twelve. Um, yes. He actually, he does look at you for a second. Uh, Dyra, as you kind of pull the magic up and you make the quietest, softest whisper you can, it barely escapes on the breath between your teeth. And you reach out and you whisper into the corner of Nulra's mind. They have a cannon. She'll try and hide it on her face. At the table. Hmm. Give me Stop. a saving throw. <laughs> no. You were... No. She rolled so well. Watch as I fuck the whole thing up. 
seven. Oh. <laughs> um, <Cat> wind. <laughs> you struggle. Um, because immediately your mind starts racing, Nulra. Targal has put this on you. He has put all of it on you. And Diara's whisper is a scream in your ear. And the panic and the fear. You're not looking at Redmond. You're not looking at Winnie. You're not looking at Fern. You're not looking at the heads on the table. You can't stop seeing Umbra. And the very real possibility that one or more of your siblings are, are not going to survive this. Has Farron noticed anything? His eyes are on you. She's going to look at him and stand up and say, I'm going to find Diara. You can bring whatever escort you wish. I need to go to her now. I've lost one sibling, fair. I'm not ready to lose another right now. But she's safe. Hmm. I'm going. No, you're and she's gonna, not. She'll make a step towards the door. Don't make me. Make you what? Ooh. Ooh. Do you want to come with me? Oh, no. Well, then, which of your goons? Oh, what about Wonderball? I think he likes me a lot. Let's go with him. Bring him out. Whistle for him. Nora, stop. Sit down, Nora. He pulls a... He just literally whips it from around the back of the chair. There's a, a crossbow. Not the crossbow. Uh, no. uh, <laughs> round. A 16 to hit Mooney. Oh, <gasps> Mooney! Yeah. Does that hit? It's Take four piercing damage, Mooney. Ow! I asked you. Where, no, how far are you away from the table? Have you left the table? I took a step away. Okay. Regiment's going to grab your arm and try to get you to sit down. Just say, sit! Now! I need to go sit. to Diara. She's fine. She's gonna. She's not gonna move any further, but she's not gonna sit and stare at Fern. She wants to look at Mooney. She wants to go to Mooney, but she's not moving. She's staring at Fern. Oh. He is just smiling up at you, Nora. Where's the arrow in her arm, like? Or it, it, it literally. He shot across her, um, so it actually it's not sticking in her. Uh, like he's it's 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 a cut uh, more than anything else. It's Would you a prefer deep one. Mm. Would you prefer one of the others to go? I've already asked once nicely, so take a fucking seat, or the next one isn't going to be a graze. Mm -mm. Declan, you are testing me. You're testing me right now. I thought we were going to recruit people this episode. <laughs> They're all dead. <laughs> where is Mooney sitting and where is Rajman sitting in relation so to me? Mooney is literally on the is the only person sitting on the other side of the table right now. Uh, so Regiment would be to your right, uh, I think, because you were the one that walked into the room. So you were sitting the closest to uh, Ferrin. Yeah, she'll drag... She'll drag the chair around. I assume he's at like the head of the table. Yes, is he? he is. Yeah, and at the top of the room as well. She's going to drag the chair right beside him, like turn it to be facing him, Ooh. and and sit, sit facing him. AC Slater style. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to reset Farron's clock. Ooh. I've what does that mean? <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Oh, Jacqueline, you can't do this. My fucking heart is dead. Oh my god, I James, why time. did you, why did you teach Declan about clocks? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Declan, can you just tell us is it a good or a bad thing? Please. <laughs>
but sorry. sorry. It's all relative. It's it could sorry. be a good thing for him. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> for who? I'd point There's out we're at one hundred and ninety dollars. So. Uh... Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that means you have to tell us. You have to tell us. Yes, it's a good the, thing. That's the rule for for him. <laughs> Maybe for it's somebody playing this game. It's oh, a good for... thing. God's sake. <sighs> it's no. his patience clock. <laughs> oh no. I hate My it. patience clock is, is broken. <laughs> I tell I right. If it if it hits two hundred, I'll tell you what that clock is. Uh, oh my god. Um <laughs> Wait, <sorry. laughs> um, you you've dragged the chair over and as you take a seat uh, opposite him, like now, kind of like pulling it away from the table, and a regiment kind of having not calmed you down, but sort of brought you back uh, from um, a brink. Theron puts a hand on the bottle again. Somebody is gonna fucking tell me what this is. Why can't your man tell you? He said it was magical and strong. He knows more than we do. She says as she bleeds. <laughs> See, you just said it was a gift from your mam. So yeah. that leads me to believe that you might have an idea as to what it is. He doesn't. We don't know what it is, though. She just gave it to us. And then she died. Hmm. Tilly said she lifted it off your dead brother. So, yeah. the way I see it, he doesn't need it anymore. Well, that usually min means that it gets passed down to the next stick in. <laughs> so I think I it'd be fair. Next dickhead. Is that wrong? <laughs> Sorry. It's so it technically belongs to the family now. Mm. But we're all family here in Cove, like I was saying, and... I took the one made for me, and it didn't turn out that well. So I highly doubt it'll be good for you if you take one for me for my brother, so... Knock yourself out. <laughs> he pops the cork. Hmm... <gasps> <gasps> Do you know who our ma was? <laughs> Judging by the the four of you is probably not that much of a parent. <laughs> Do you know who she was? Some slag. Drink that. Reggie stands up. Oh. He'll probably no, give you a Reggie. hint. No. If you survive. I mean he does have a point. Umbra is, is dead. Umbra he doesn't need okay. it anymore. So I thought you meant that Larry was a slag for a second. <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. I would, I would not get it sad to head for saying that unless you didn't shit in it before. You think yeah. you're smart, Farron, but we don't actually don't know what it know. does. So I, you should probably drink it. I'm gonna find out. Can I do something? Yeah, of course you can. Oh my god, Emma, don't look what do happened it, to do me. It, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. So after he calls Hilaria Slag. Uh-huh. Which I am very really sorry for. Declan is sorry for Farron's uh -huh. a dickhead. And I'm trying to play him like a dickhead. <laughs> and I don't like... People are not slags, but Farron's a twat. I'm going to kill him. I'd like to throw a hand axe. <gasps> oh, no. Fuck off! Fuck you! Oh, no. Fuck you giving out to me! Fuck you! Yes! <laughs> Do it. Oh my god. Do oh it. my god. My heart is in my throat. Roll. Roll for it, please. Oh, no. <laughs> not 20. Not 20. Not 20. Not 20. Not 20. <laughs> Do I see Regiment doing this? Um, no, because no, Regiment is reacting more than anything else. So it's not a sort of a planned out thing. I think it's a kind of catching him more than anything else. That's a seven to hit. Oh, fuck. A seven. A seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. No. <laughs> oh. um. Wait, I have inspiration from last game, uh, and not not the not the storytelling one. I have another. Okay, one. that's fine. Yeah, you can. 
Seven again. <laughs> Six. Should have peeled it. God damn it. Right, I, rolled a, I rolled a real dice this time, and it's 23. Yes! Uh, roll for damage. Okay, I'm going to use my real dice again. <laughs> um, which is uh, 1d6 plus 3, so 1d6. Five if plus he spills three my eight. potion, I will be sickened, but like... <laughs> <laughs> um okay so uh, oh, sorry i didn't catch that how much eight you regiment as you stand up the axe is already in your hand before you even have a chance to think about it and the axe is already loose from your grip before you even have a chance to think about it. Because all you heard was this man, this man who apparently uh, is connected to you in some way or form. And this man who has done nothing but bring harm and ruin and devastation to anyone that's encountered him. And you watched as he shot Mooney. You watched as he poked and egged and berated Nulra. And as difficult and as trying as it was, you held on to everything. But when you hear him speak Illyria's name and you hear what he says to her, it isn't a time for thinking. And the axe <sighs> flies through the air and Nulra, you... You hear Regiment spitting just anger and upset. And then there's a splash of droplets on your face and they are warm. And you see a hat and axe buried into Ferrin's right shoulder. Has he has he done anything? Is he still sitting down? He's still he's still sitting. Mane. Can I shout to Mooney, go to Diara? Mooney's going to cast invisibility on herself. And I will stand up and draw my axe. Okay. As all of this happens in the dining hall, Mm-mm. Diara, is there anything you are doing now that you've reached the horses and you've you you are at your horse? Um... <laughs> la 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 la! Everything's going great. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta and... get the book, we. <laughs> and your whole had... family are from yeah. Cove, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to have lived here for about two hundred years. <laughs> um, I had a plan. <laughs> <laughs> kind of fucked it now. So Oops. she's going to like rummage in the satchels <laughs> and take the book out and then be like here it is. I don't know if I want to do this. Oh fuck me. Do okay, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Okay. And then she's gonna just put a hand on his arm and say thanks so much for your escort but I should be fine to find my way back and cast blindness (laughs) you on the other hand (laughs) Um, okay that is a the con save of 13 okay oh god I mean, yeah, he's great at this. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, sorry, I have a look here. My hands um, are shaking. Oh my God, my hands are actually shaking. He has no, it's, he's no minuses or pluses. It's just a straight up. And you have to beat a 13? Yeah. Oh, fuck me, that's a nat one. He's <laughs> blind. His eyes fall out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it isn't... A couple of things happen at that exact moment. That's the time... That's the second where Regiment lets the axe loose and it catches in Farron's shoulder. It's where Mooney's instant reaction, her 
her instincts to be anywhere, to be to be anywhere safe, to be anywhere away from all this, to be anywhere but in harm's way kicks in where Nolra reaches because Redmond has declared war. I love you. In that exact moment, you place a hand on this man's shoulder and you tell him that you no longer need an escort, that you will be fine. The magic the words built up around you and this time you see him reacting because he's gotten a sense of your energy of your arcane magic and the essence that coalesces around you as you conjure but before he has a chance to react the words already leave your lips and you see his eyes go milk bottle white and he clutches at his ears as the word, the pitch increases louder and louder. And he is both blind and deafened. Oh! Yay! Go, baby! But then the magic snags. Meh. And you feel it for a second. It's it's your energy, it's your spell, it is your word. And then it becomes something else. You're not certain at all at all. And the horses spook. <gasps> and between you and them, the air seems to ripple. Like vapor on a hot day rising from stones. And it gets harder, things get blurrier, it's it's more difficult to see. And stepping through thin air. Vestra and the Goliath. Fuck oh, no. And we'll take our break there. Oh, I fucking hate you. I thought it was gonna be Ombra. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. That's not, oh my not god, not. are they working for Farron? What's going on? I have so many questions. Um, oh five minutes or god. ten minutes? I'm good with five, but. Yeah, I say need... five. Let's, let's roll. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> five five minutes it is. <laughs> Rooney's going to save the horses. See y'all in five, buddy. <laughs> okay. Five minute break. We'll be back. Uh, Don't forget. Thank to you donate. so much, everybody. Link is there. Who did... Thank you to everybody who did donate. Um, thank you. Th- yeah. Um, and, Does Ferris uh, clock matter still? If we reach the the two hundred when I come back, I'll tell you. Um, what are we on? One ninety, uh, I believe, which is insane. Uh, oh my God. And you're also one step closer, Fiona, to me wearing that wizard's cloak. Just as oh a, my God. <laughs> just, as a just for me. Just for just me. For for nothing you. underneath. Oh. oh, God. Okay, I'm cutting. I'm cutting to intermission. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Shabam! Kablam! <laughs> Perfect. Hello. Tell us what it means! 205! Tell that us what it means! It actually works for, like, um, as a producer thing, just as a the kaboosh thing does work. It, I was, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, okay, it works. Yeah, do let's that. do that from now on. That works. It works oh. very well. Kaboosh! Um, um, yeah, we're, thanks so much for your patience. A little over the five minutes there, but we had things to do. Emma had to tinkle. We breaks to have and stuff like that. Um... <laughs> I also, sorry, I, I told you I was looking up stats for something. I had a mouthful of peanut butter and I was desperately trying to, like, <laughs> <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> what the <laughs> look stats. Look up stats with peanut butter. Um, yeah, I wanted Hi, a Zan. snack, but I'm like... Hi, Zan! Um, we... Hi, Zan uh, yes, and party. We... Oh, uh, was that a, is that a raid? Yeah! yeah. Oh, Yay. Hey, Hello! Um, welcome along, you're... You're hitting the sweet spot, actually, Zan, at that exact moment. Um, oh, for no. me, the sweet spot for me. Uh, <laughs> We're about to fight. Let's fight. Let's go. We... No way. Don't forget the donations. Yes, that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting to. Um, <laughs> I had said that if we. Oh, God, why do I encourage charity? Um, I had said <laughs> if we got to two hundred, I would reveal Theron's clock. Um, uh, it only has. Uh, there's only two halves to it. And lying or uh, lying to Ferrin fills it in, um, and a, a lie that he detects, a permanent lie that he that you fail to kind of uh, get your way out of, permanently fills in half the clock, as in he immediately untrusts uh, the lot of you, um, and then basically anything further beyond that point that would upset him fills in the other half. And every time that clock was filled, bang, uh, he was going to shoot somebody. Uh, okay, so going... when you said it reset. That, that was means... a good thing. <laughs> no, it wasn't a good thing. No, no. <laughs> it means he's going to shoot somebody else now. Yeah. Possibly. Mm. means he's possibly going to shoot somebody else now. Well, to be fair, you, you, you all initiated a fight. You all. You, you all. The royal you all. Mm. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Prince Regmond. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, if you are just joining us, uh, the gang have returned to Cove book in hand, but with a plan to overthrow the horrific uh, uh, Captain Farron, who has held the village of Cove hostage for the last number of years, uh, as well as being linked to Regmond's past. Uh, They've learned that Cove has, the village is very quiet, suspiciously quiet. And while things at the table took a drastic turn um, after <laughs> Ferrin uh, um, slandered Slag and assaulted and slagged Regiment's Ma, um, <laughs> a fight has broken out in the dining hall. Um, meanwhile, Diara has learned that um, Ferrin seems prepared for something. Uh, there's a cannon uh, pointed out at sea that is kind of half hidden. And just as she had, uh, and for the record, you've taken out, I will tell you this for free, just because the charity thing did go over 200. Uh, that is the only caster in Ferrin's squad. So he's yeah. out. I've, like, he's out for the count for that. Like, that's, no, that that one, he's he's oh. useless. Um, well done, Diara. Um, so I will. I, I will did something what... useful. Now I'm going to die. <laughs> we're all doing. We're all doing great too. So it's not just you. We're all. We're all doing pretty good. Mm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm. Great job with the axe throwing, Reggie. Um. Not so much as... with the lying, Nora. <laughs> uh, as you um. As you watch that that, the light kind of shimmer uh, and that heat and everything kind of phase around you and. Uh, Diara, you come face to face with the woman from the pier at Cashlon at the harbour and the metallic Goliath. Uh, her eyes lock on you and she smiles. <gasps> oh, I don't know if that now. And she steps back in. That wasn't Diara. 
Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> um, she's gonna be like staring at the shimmering and then kind of get her bearings and head for the cannon to try and sabotage it. Uh, As she's gonna sneak up to the <laughs> to the cannon because in case there's anyone guarding it. As you um, as you watch her step back into that space, like she just vanishes. It's it's like she's stepping behind a wall, but you can see all around it. She's just she's just gone. As is the the metallic soldier with her. Uh, you slink away. Give me a stealth check. Oh God. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Mine, I'm gonna use my inspiration! <laughs> <gasps> okay, 16. A bet. Better. You slink down. Um, the the horses um, have kind of settled a little bit, and though a few people had... Um, Sorry, though they had kind of been startled and spooked, they seem to have kind of canned. You drop low and you, as quickly as you can, scurry to the back wall. Um, and when you do, you immediately find yourself kind of with your back pressed against it. And there's an audible <sighs> from the windowsill. <laughs> and an orange and white tabby is just staring down at you. Um, very angrily and very hungrily. Is there any jam in the bag? <laughs> From where you are, you can just make out the the hut where you saw the cannon. On your right, that shimmering still there. Mm. Do I follow her? No, she fucking took nearly took us all out in one go. Um, I'm going to cast. Um, minor illusion of a little mouse so the cat will fuck off. Okay. Um, you uh, imagine um, a, a little mouse um, kind of half scurrying around the place and the cat its eyes go wide for a second and you just hear a thump as it lies down heavily and lazily on the windowsill basking in the the heat <laughs> of the morning sun completely and totally disinterested in you and your illusionary mouse <laughs> umbra <gasps> as anyway that's what i go um, <laughs> uh, there we go. um as you as these portals open up one after the other in front of you. You're seeing flashes of the Inishtar countryside. You're seeing cliff and rock. You're seeing mud and fields. You're seeing woodland and creatures. And in the distance of each, you see the walls of Cove. You see the road leading down into it and it gets closer and closer. And just when you find yourself almost at the gates, a little further beyond, and there's just a wheezing, like a very labor, like, <laughs> most indignified at this stage, but we're almost there. <sighs> beyond the walls, you feel magic being cast and you know the magic is Diara's. He is going to um, 
press his hand to his chest while he runs, try and steady his breathing. He's going to use Vigilant Blessing to give him advantage on his next initiative roll. Um, he is strapping on his shield uh, to his arm, um, kind of checking his his weaponry. Uh, he kind of... Uh, not really paying attention, but um, does uh, turn back and, and kind of to Brassica say... You're the sprightliest badger I have ever met, and that is saying quite a lot considering Mooney. Little badger, little goat. He he <laughs> oh, eyes. Oh, her propensity he eyes that for comment a little, yeah, yeah. He does. He's got a little bit suspicious. And then there's, there's been other badgers. Um, uh, okay, I think I've got. I think I've got one more in me. Um, I. And he kind of he shakes his little head. Yep, yep, uh, it's most definitely there. Um, and uh, he just—you can see him—he he looks completely and totally exhausted. He and... turns and like kneels down to him and says, "Hey, once we're in there, you get somewhere safe and you hide, okay?" <laughs> I always knew you were the funny one, Umbra. I'm not going in there. <laughs> I value my existence, and he he scratches at the air, and where he cuts, and you've you've seen him do this. Uh, it's literally it's like uh, it's like any animal kind of pawing at the door or scratching at the curtains. It's just cutting at nothing, but you you see beyond that, and he is actually tearing at the fabric of space. He's allowing you, he is casting this dimension door and just beyond it, you can see the other side of Cove. And there's a faint image. You can see horses. And you can see some buildings. And half scuttled down, you see this glowing, luminescent light and you know it's Dyra <laughs> he's caught between a smile and panic uh, not knowing exactly what's going on and he says you are definitely better in flesh than in wood See you back out here. Oh, right back at you. And he literally yawns. So it's just it's like a, a very audible. <sighs> and uh, he flops down and starts sleeping. <laughs> That's the laugh, man. <laughs> Things could be easy, huh? Uh, and he turns the steps through. I'm going to need everyone to give me initiative rolls. <laughs> Thanks, Regiment. <laughs> Look at her laughing. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, 17 for Misha. Oh, 18 God. for Misha. Uh, 15. Hang on. Uh, we to fill in the initiative tracker. Okay. Oh. So, Umber and Nora got 17. Regiment, what'd you get? 15. I filled it in. You got 15. Diaris I got 19. 19. Boom. Love that. Nice. Love that for you. Nice. 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 Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, 14 for Ferrin. Suck a bitch. Mm. Yeah, stupid Ferrin. Wow. No, don't kill us. Please don't kill us. He's going to kill us. Why didn't we save his AC the last time we fought him? <laughs> As far as we know, that's it. Uh, yeah, as far as you know. Um, <laughs> Mooney. You were casting invisibility. That was your action? Yes. Yeah. Um, and any bonus action? Uh, I'm going to use my movement. Uh, let me see. Let me just double check to see if I have any bonus actions. I don't think that I do. Uh, 
Come on, let's go. Bonus actions. Telepathic, in step, wizard of the Corral. No, I'm going to use my movement and I'm going to try and find Ayara. Um, Regmond and Nolra, right across from you, you just see Mooney vanish. She's just gone. The chair is shoved back and you hear her footsteps as she bolts out of the room. And yeah, Mooney, you've you make it clear. Uh, Ferrin literally uh, he's grabbing at the hand axe buried into his shoulder. Um, Diara. So looking at the map, I'm down where the horses are. Correct. And the cannon house is which one? Closest to the dock, that little brown roof. Oh yes. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna, uh, can I hear anyone from inside or any movement from inside? From inside the, the, the building that you're in? No, moment? like where, where the, where the, you can barely is. just see from where you are, from where you're positioned. Cause you're, you didn't move too far from where you were. Um, okay. you can barely still see the, the hut. You've kept an eye on it, but you've not gotten close enough to inspect um okay so she is going to use her movement to mm, she's gonna cut the horses loose and kind of send them running to see if anyone comes out of any of the buildings okay give me an animal animal, animal handling check I'm good at that too. For some reason, fifteen. Okay, and what are you doing to the horses to make them run effectively? Like I'm just touching asking you first. Okay, you're giving them consensually uh, touching their butts. You're slapping the horses. <laughs> um, you, um, you shirk back towards the the horses, um, and you just. One after the other, you hit them uh, as hard as you can with the flat of your hand. Uh, the horses rear up and they run. Um, they're not into a full gallop, uh, but they run straight towards the, the centre of the town. I will factor in four plus three. So there's seven horses. There was three already there. So I will factor that in. Seven horses running wild for some... <laughs> Yeah. Party and code. It's a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually think it fucking might be. Um, <laughs> Look at Diara carrying this episode. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, it actually is. Um, I roll to see if any of them would be stupid enough. Um, and yeah, uh, Diara, as the horses uh, race uh, up through the village. From the cottage furthest away from you, close to the, the tavern, you see several men and women, Ferrin's men and women, come running. They're trying to stop the horses. <laughs> okay. Diara, as you make it to the door, and you've only kind of just made it to the door, you see the same scene. You see these wild horses, Gary leading the... the <laughs> Mooney, you mean? The... No, Gary the horse. No, the Mooney, Mooney sees. sees. Yeah, oh, Mooney sorry. sees this. Yeah, yeah, Mooney sees, yeah, and Gary's leading the the pack of rebel horses as they um, <laughs> join the cause, apparently. <laughs> Um, well, who's to say? Who's to say where they land? Umbra, you watched as that light kind of move and got closer, um, and it's it's standing only a couple of feet from you. He's just running through the between space at the moment. Yeah. He there's a a, a split second in his mind where he's like. How do I tell someone I'm back from the dead again a second time? Um, and before he can think about it, he just shakes his head and barrels through. As much as it feels like you've ran 
a mile. As you put a foot, one foot in front of you and you burst through, you're already out the other side. And it's a strange feeling. It's it's the same feeling you felt every time uh, you walked through these spaces that Brassica kind of conjured or tore up for you. And just over your shoulder to your left, standing there a little uh, quietly half kind of squatting down uh, against a wall, you see Diara looking up at the heart of Co Village and the is seven horses a stamp? Oh, we'll just say the stampede of horses that she's mm-hmm. let loose um, <laughs> up through the village and the men and women that have ran out of their hiding space to get them back. Do I see him? Or am I distracted uh, by the horses? You're, yeah, you're you're looking at the horses. You're like he he can kind of see you over his shoulder, acknowledging the chaos and realizing that this is maybe a time for subtlety. <laughs> he reaches over and like claps a hand over her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> She immediately struggles. And then whispers into her ear, it's me, 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 it's me. Struggles more. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Zombra. 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 <laughs> he he Whips like, around. He takes like a hand and like turns it around to show the tattoos in the back. Did you change your jewellery over yet? <laughs> no. Oh, that's what I that's what I got the inspo for. I forgot. <laughs> oh yeah. That was fucking gas. Um so she's gonna um, see Emma, I actually sorry sorry to cut across Alice. I'm actually giving you inspiration as well for standing up for Alaria. Like um Aww. which feels like you're standing up for me, but it's more the fact that you did something <laughs> amazing in character. Um, Yay. So uh, despite it's the threat of what it was going to bring, you have inspiration for that as well. Yay. Thank you. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Use your inspiration when you die, unlike Umbra. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Diara, sorry. And Umbra, uh, it's Umbra is still technically your action. Okay. So you just waved a hand in front of her face with the tattoo. So she's gonna just be like incomplete and like overwhelming joy, but also she's extremely pissed off that you've died on her twice. <laughs> So she's just going to spin around and cast message at him and say, I told you not to leave me again. And then pull him into a really tight hug. Yeah, he's going to spend the entire, for whatever it's worth, he spends his entire turn just hugging her. (laughs) Misha? No, no, no. Me? Yeah. Um, he's still holding Umbra's potion, isn't he? Uh, yes, he still has that. And he, I assume, was slightly caught off guard by the axe well, in his... Big time, yeah. Not okay, so much now, because there's an axe buried in him, but yes. Yeah. Can I attempt to snatch the potion from his hand? Give me a... <laughs> it's gonna spill. Now, don't forget, I drew my axe, so I'm hoping he is preoccupied by looking at that in my other hand. It's uncorked. (laughs) I'll be careful. He also hasn't reacted to the axe buried in his shoulder, just as a heads up. But we're going to do contested, uh, because you're you're trying to snatch it from him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Give me a... He's going to do a deck saving throw. You give me a athletics check. Okay. Or... Yeah, you said it. Did you say it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, fine. I said it. I got a dirty 20. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, sorry. I have like a million different things open. Um, fair enough. Okay. You, as he, uh, as one hand reaches up to pull the hand axe out, he rolled a 12. Well, what, a 7 plus 5. Uh, where you're... Because you you pull your great axe out. And as you... Um, 
as you reach for it, your eyes, they lo- they they land on the, the the bottle. They land on the little glass bottle. And in that moment where he reacted to reach for the axe, that laps, and you dive, and his hand a second later reaches out for it, and you grab the bottle from the table. And the cork. Where is the cork? Uh, he did, he did that pop it it's open. Gone. Kind of. Yeah. Stick your she, finger in it. She will attempt <laughs> yeah to to stand to step back from him. Uh, so she has her axe. She has the thing. She is going to tear with her with her uh, with her teeth a strip of fabric from her sleeve, and then jam it into the into the tube. You're trying to make a stopper. I get you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll let you do that between grabbing it and whatnot. That'll be your action and bonus action, making yeah. fastening the stopper. And it's not ideal, but it's more than it's better than nothing. Uh, Regiment. Um, Regiment would like to to draw his great axe and head for Farron. Mm. Um, now seeing that Nulrag has gotten the potion, he's going to turn to her and say, "Run!" No, and he, we, it's my go. I said no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He he's just going to say, "I'll follow you in a second and he will draw his great axe and uh, hold it up above and try attack Farron while he's dealing with his shoulder. Yep, give me an attack roll, please. I will. Uh, that's a nine. You got, you got inspiration. I have inspiration. <laughs> I, I'm going to roll it again. And once again, I'm going to use my real dice. Uh, <laughs> Stop using the fake dice. I know. d and Beyond is not my friend today. Oh, great. That's an 18 plus 5, 23. Yeah. <laughs> Same as last time. Um, yeah, and the damage? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 1d12. Plus three. Uh, so three plus three is six. Okay. You. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, there's a couple of other things I can do here. Do you mind if I do them? Um, so when I successfully hit, uh, I can use my bonus action to deal one more uh, D6 yeah. damage. Uh, that's a six, so it's 12 total. Um, and I think there's something else I can do as well. So sorry, I should look this up. Um, no, I think that's I think that's it for now. I Did think. you add your, your extra damage, by the way? Oh, yes. Plus one. Plus one. First three hits. Yep, so that's 13 then. Okay. Um, Nolra, as you... S- snatch the bottle away from uh, Farron's grip. Uh, you watch as Regiment just kind of barrels past you, great axe swinging. Um, and Farron scrambles uh, at this stage. He kind of half shoves himself to the, to the right uh, and you catch him right along his back uh, and his left shoulder blade down uh, along his lower back. And the axe actually scrapes uh, into the uh, the stone fireplace just behind him. And there's a tearing and flash of sparks uh, where your axe meets the stone. And you just see Farron's back is covered in blood. And as he kind of half turns to, to try and avoid the brunt of your uh, your attack regiment, he kind of stumbles back into facing both you and Nulra and just <laughs> he he's looking a little off and uh, he, he wobbles a little bit reaches for the hand axe on his shoulder <sighs> this could have played out so much fucking better for you lot um, maybe. Um, 
but uh, Regiment has slashing, which means I reduce the speed of Farron by 10 feet in the, until the start of my next turn. Okay. Um, and as he says that, Regiment will just say, I wouldn't want this to play it any other way. He curls a smile at you, Regiment, and his eyes fix on you. It's as if there's nobody else but him and you in the room. But then, lad, how will you ever find out about where you came from? That and he jumps back into the uh, the hallway between the kitchen and the dining room. Wait, is that more than 10 feet? He's literally, he's just disengaged. Okay. Like he's just, he's getting out of reach of, of you lot. As he jumps back, he lets out a bellowing, now! Oh no, that's not great. Coward. <laughs> and, okay. At this point, Doors open everywhere in the village of Cove. And men and women, dwarves, humans, orc, halflings spill out. All shouting, Farron, Farron, Farron. And the group are desperately wrestling with the horses at this point. And Mooney... Umbra and Diara, you see them all. There's at least 40 strong. They are armed to the teeth and several dart straight towards the house. And Umbra and Diara, from where you're standing, you see a small man and a gnome woman reaching up towards that hut and you hear the groaning of a, of a door as it opens and then the sounds of something being dragged out of it. Like the cannon? Possibly. It is... And I am going to, hang on one second. I am going to roll for, so the way it's done is I've split his men into different groups based on what they are, like in terms of their stats and so on and so forth. So I'm going to roll for the, what I'm calling the Axe Pirates. And that is, should all these stats open in front of me? That would make sense easier. Okay. That is a 13 for them. And then... The chain parts, that's a 16 for them. And then the non skilled, the, the EOD general parts who are staying that way and are never going to get promoted <laughs> because that's a three. <laughs> um, and they, they just fan out, they just literally start to. Uh, filter through and several of them are heading down towards the, the docks some are heading towards uh, the house and Mooney standing at the doorway you watch you see all this happen in front of you oh god oh god it's is your it action my, is it my turn it is oh my god <laughs> So there's just like a wave of people coming towards me and they can't see me because I'm invisible <laughs> and they're all going to stomp all over me. Yeah. What the hell am I going to do? Hang on. That completely threw me off. Um... Oh, God. Mold Earth, everybody. Yeah, only he's like five foot though. 
What am I gonna do? Oh no! Okay, um... Do I see them moving that big cannon out? No, not from, the horses. not from where I am. Yeah. Oh god. I'm okay. Them up. I'm gonna cast. Um, I'm gonna lose my invisibility though, but I'm gonna have to do it to save everyone. <laughs> I'm going to um, right in front of me, right where all the people are charging. I'm gonna cast uh, Maximilian's Earthen Grasp to make my big badger paw out of the earth. Right. And then I'm just going to try and just swipe them <laughs> and hopefully just catch one of them. Like, dramatically, just going to swipe them all. But uh, by rules as written, it can only grab one of them. Okay. So I'm just going to try and grab a villager, just show okay. strength and crush them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that an attack roll for you or a saving throw for me? Let me see. Uh, a target has to make a strength saving throw. Okay. Um, and I tell you what, in the interest of... Because I have these three different types of pirates. There's the axe pirates, the chain pirates, and your shitty standard pirate. Um, I'm going to... So one to two, it will be the an axe pirate that you grab. Three to four, a chain pirate. Or five to six, uh, just a regular old shitty pirate. Because they all have different stats. Um, it's a chain pirate. Um, and they are rolling strength saving throw, and that is going to be plus three. That is a 17. Oh, for fuck's sake, they save! Um, you, as you watch this, this group, um, rush towards the house, and there's about six of them in total, there's one particular chap that you see in the crowd, you recognize him. Oh, he is a. And you can't help but immediately dig your hand down into the dirt and the, the gravel. And as you flick an open claw through it, it scratches and tears. And in front of your eyes, Mooney, as you become visible, the earth itself rips open and a very large badger paw just swipes up. And several of them are startled and are kind of half thrown off. But it reaches up and goes to crush Murphy. Murphy? <gasps> and as the as the, the dirt uh, uh, and the talons just squeeze around him, you see him drop a large, heavy chain with a ball at the end of it. He rings it up around his neck. How yeah. far is he from Umbra? Uh they're about you're about sixty feet away from him. 60 feet exactly. Silvery barbs. Reroll the save. Oof. <laughs> That's an 18. Son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. Well, he's he going tried. to give Mooney advantage on her next uh, pretty much anything she does. Attack ability check or save. Okay. Um, <gasps> As um, you watch them spill out and you see this earthen claw just erupts from the dirt and the gravel, uh, Umbra, you focus on him. You see where it's going. The ball just whips through and it hits the dirt and the claw just dissipates and the dirt crumbles around him and they continue their charge now towards you, Mooney. No! Um, any bonus actions? <laughs> No. She runs back in. <laughs> you turn back and you race into the house. They don't stop. They don't slow down. They're barreling down on top of you. Just let me check for bonus actions. Um, so it was my spell, my bonus action. No. 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 Uh, no, that's it. Okay. <laughs> run back in. Um, you turn and run back into the house. Um, Diara. Um, I am going to point at the cannon house, for want of a better word, and s say to 
Umbra. We have to destroy that cannon. Or we have to destroy whatever's in there. And yeah. point and cast Shatter. <gasps> Come on, baby. Yep. Go for it. <laughs> so it's a con save of 13. Or it's an, well, yeah, it's a save and throw. But it's a non magical object. So, how does that work? It just fails. Or it's a. Well, it's anything in a okay. range, right? So the people will probably get hit too. Yep. Um, 10 foot radius. Okay. And. Yeah, that's fine. I'll roll for them. Um, and you said it's a con save. Yep, 13. Um, okay. Okay, so. Let me just check if there. I think there might be. That's a, that's a 17 for the pirates. Fuck you, pirates. And then for Tilly. <gasps> oh, Tilly! Shit. That's an eight. What? And when you're unconscious, it's a zero, right? You don't roll con saves. It's an Sad. automatic. Oh, well, she ripped us off. <laughs> you automatically fail if you're unconscious. Uh, uh, and it yeah. saves, right? Yeah. Okay, roll the damage. 15. Okay, um, and they take half the damage on a, say, a um, save, correct? On a failed save or half as much on a successful one, yeah. Okay, so... But the building and the cannon would take full damage, right? Full, yeah. Okay. Um, and the... Oof, uh, okay. Um, the way I work, I'm working this as well, again, this is just for clarity kind of sake um i've kind of based on the based on the numbers that Theron has on his side i have kind of a lot of them and i said there's three different types uh, that he has uh that you've seen um stressing that part oh, uh, Jesus. you they have a shared pool of hp so uh, even though those two particular uh, pirates saved their uh, their con save, uh, they succeeded on it. Um, combined, they, they would have taken seven damage each, um, so that would be fourteen. That's enough to effectively take one of them out. Um, so I, I'll be so every time you hit a total, he loses a member of his okay army. Yeah. If that makes that makes cool. sense to everybody, is that, yes. is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you did 14 damage in total to that pool. Um, so... I'm trying to do math. I'm struggling live on stream. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, right. Um, Diara, you focus on that space in front of you, and Umbra, you can see it. You can you can literally see the magic welling up inside her, and that light becomes a concentration all around her. And it, I mean, you'd always figured her her music, her sound, her words were the magic, but you can actually see it concentrated in her throat. You can see where the magic is actually forming and holding itself. And as that sound gets louder uh, and becomes utterly inaudible, you let it go. Diara and Regiment, uh, sorry, Umber, right in front of you, you see several barrels and crates next to the uh, hut just splinter and crack. And then the walls of the that building, that stone building, actually start to split and crack. And there's just uh, an eruption of sound. Mm -hmm. And the roof is blown open, and you actually hear the, the two pirates inside. Um, roar um one hits the wall uh and is knocked completely unconscious inside tied to chairs you see richter and tilly and the cannon in its full form and wrapped around the barrel there is a now dented iron dragon just 
kind of formed around the mouth. It's an ornamental <gasps> piece as such. It is lit. Oh, shit. Oof. Um, she's going to grab Umbra's arm and just be like, oh, I didn't know they were in there. I uh, did. Too late now. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus action. Uh, Bardic Inspiration to Umbra. Who's next? Umbra. Okay, and Umbra. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, Cannon is angled at the main house. Uh, Cannon is aimed out at C, from what you can tell. Huh. Looking towards the shoreline, does he catch sight of anything? Here and now, with that building kind of blown open, yeah, you can see, you can see the ship that Targal and the volunteers set sail on. They are very close to the shoreline. Shit. And how many people are heading towards the who are actively chasing Mooney right now? Um. There's about eight running in the direction towards the house. But that's eight of what spilled out from all the buildings. Yeah, that's a that's a choice, isn't it? That's a choice that I have to make. <laughs> that's cool. Choices Take are out fun. The cannon. Take out the cannon. Choices are fun. It's like a telltale town. game. Mooney did not like this. <laughs> Mooney will remember this. <laughs> the thing is, there's fuck all that Umber even has to take out a cannon. Like, is he going to shoot the cannon with his arrow? Is that what he's going to do? Because I don't think that's going to do it. Oh. He... Declan... You're 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 a real sum bitch. You're just a <laughs> fuck. Um, I mean, okay. <laughs> lacking, lacking anything to necessarily damage a big fucking hunk of metal. He's instead going to throw his hands out in front of him and cast moonbeam. Um, centered on the front of the house uh, directly in front of it anyone who passes through it it's 10 feet wide anyone who passes through it will have to take 2d10 radiant damage well sorry we'll have to uh, uh, make a con save or take 2d10 radiant okay. uh, and he is going to keep that there as a deterrent and he is going to get back behind cover ideally before he's spotted if he can position himself behind the building he doesn't he just needs to keep concentration on that now okay um yeah you you look at the the ship drawing closer to cove you see the sails you see the cannon but your 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 gaze drifts right back towards the house and mooney and the frantic attempt she had to try and stave off the the onslaught heading towards where you assume regiment and nolra are it fails and mooney runs and there's nothing between her and them and just this wave of light just fills that space in front of them and you see if you kind of hesitate for a moment looking at it bonus action No, no, nothing. Okay. Uh, Nora. Um. First thing she's going to do is enter a rage because of a number of factors. First of all, it was Regiment <laughs> telling her what to do. Second of all, it was trying to control herself around the man that attempted to kill her brother. And third of all, it's because she heard the hordes of people outside and she knows that Mooney and Diara are both out there. Are, what floor of the house are we on, Declan? You're on the ground floor. Okay. Uh, are we are we near the door that we can see? 
like what can we see when we look at the windows if there's windows you can just see you can see a storm of people running towards the house there are windows looking out from where you are you are um, and do we have kind of can we see do we have a clear exit to leave through the door the way that you came through yeah yes there is yeah it is a clear okay she's gonna she's gonna put a, a hand on regiment's arm she will be looking at where Farron went and she knows that he, Regiment probably wants to go after him, but she's going to turn to him and say, we need to find the others now. And she's not going to drag him, but she's going to pull and let go and she is going to run for the the door to try and get out. Full as, movement. As you shout this at Regiment to, to go look, you have to look for the others uh, and that rage burns up inside you and you turn to run. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh. <gasps> We're not doing well. Roll better. You put a hand on Regiment and you turn to run and you feel your hand just move away from him and you're not in the house. You're in the woods. Oh, no. It's cold and dark and snow crunches underfoot and you hear a man screaming your name. Do I recognize the voice? She would keep She'd keep running in the direction she was moving in. When you, uh, you have effectively become confused. Shit. And you are still enraged. I'm not, this isn't a, a lost thing or anything at all, but this confusion, um, I'm going to need you to roll, uh, D10 for me. Seven. You have to attack the closest thing to you. No. Rough. How far have I gotten? Am I still closest to regiment? You are technically still closest to regiment. Uh, if there was no picture there. How far um, did I run before this what's happened? The re- what's the reach on your great axe? A foot? <laughs> Five feet. We say great axe. I really just mean minuscule. It's like what you, <laughs> you pack it into your carry-on luggage. No, I, even if, even if you had just moved away from him, it, the, the, it's a swing and back around sort of a thing. Yeah. Do I realize I'm hitting him? No, you've no idea. Oh, good. I'm continuing my shit rolls. Oh, 13 God. to hit. Yeah, that fails. Yay. Um, <laughs> Nora, you um, you hear this man screaming your name to run. and then Hold you... on. Sorry. Remember when we spoke a while ago and you said about reckless attack? Do I have to do that? Yeah. Did you just <gasps> rat on yourself? Mm-hmm. Oh my okay. god, James must be so proud. That is a 17 to hit. <gasps> yeah, it hits. Why are you like this? Fiona, why are you the way that you are? <laughs> um, and the damage? Don't look at me. I'm like when you eat those birds that you don't want people to see you eat and you have to hide your face behind a mask. So I'm going to hide myself while I do this dirty roll. I'm not mad, Fiona. I'm just disappointed. Oh, oh no! Oh. I will say, I don't think the bird anecdote is as relatable as you think it is. I think <laughs> I, I know I the bird you're him. referring to, but no, I don't think that's common knowledge that they're that okay. that's a thing. So rich people eat these tiny little birds and have to hide their faces behind masks because it's a filthy, dirty thing to do. Oh um, my god! I assume I have to add that little lovely bonus that you gave us as well. Yes, you do. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? I cannot relate to that. Thirteen damage. Um, <laughs> Lord, there's a gnashing of teeth behind you, Nulra, and instinctively your your 
your urge to survive kicks in and you swing straight back around as a uh, huge ice wolf bears down on top of you. Its eyes pure white with evil, its fangs dripping with blood, and you swat it away. Redmond Nulrazax just slices right through your side. She looks completely and totally lost. What the fuck are you doing? Am I still confused? Am I? You can still hear. You still hear that man calling out for you to run. That hurts. She's going she's gonna to keep running. I can't hear Regimen, no. You can't. Well, uh, effectively, under these conditions, you can't do okay. anything else. Well, then, in that case, she's going to run away from the wolf. Okay, you're going to follow the order. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I, I, I'm just checking. Just checking. Um... <laughs> It, um, Regiment, it's your action. Um, he's not impressed with Nora. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he'll be like, What the fuck? What are you doing? And then she runs off, and he's confused. Was it even her that hit her? <laughs> it's like, not, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Um, he's gonna hold on to his side a little bit. Um, and as she runs away, uh, he's going to turn back and go to Farron again. <gasps> and she, and he's, he's still, uh, he's still going to be going to use my real dice. He's still going to be within 10 feet. So I'm going to try to hit him with my great axe. And that is a 14 plus five is a 19 to hit. As you, as you bring your great axe down a second time on Ferrin. He brings a a long sword just up in time to parry. <gasps> uh, he literally brings it straight up, and your the the edge of your great axe bounces off the flat of his long sword. Uh, he's gritting his teeth and grinning at you. Oh, scumbag. Uh, I would like to use my. I can use a action surge thingy. Yep. Uh, to make another action. Where the fuck is it? It's not two weapon fighting because that's different. But action surge. Yeah, you can take one additional action every turn. Um, and I'm gonna try hit him again. Um, and that is a seventeen plus five twenty three twenty two. That'll hit. Yeah. He can't. Yeah, he can't use his reaction again. So. Okay, cool. Um, and then that's uh, 1d12 plus what's it, 3, sorry. Um, yeah, 1d12 plus 3. So that is a 4, uh, so 7. Um, but I'd also like to use my fire rune whenever you're ready. Yeah, you also have the mind, You also have the extra 1 from the sharpened blade. Oh yeah, so 8. Cool, yeah. Um, so I think he is to roll against his, uh, it's just his attack save strength 12. Does that mean he has to roll? Strength saving throw of 12. Well, no, it's a, it says attack for slash save strength 12. I'm not sure what that means or whose side it's on. For fire rune? Um, let me look. I think that would mean he has to make a strength saving throw of 12. I would think so, yeah. Um, okay. Is this for the chains thing, is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he has plus five to strength saving, and that's a dirty 20. All right, fair enough. Um, uh, does he take any damage from them? Because I know the last time you attacked the... When you hit a creature with attack using a weapon, you can invoke the room. The target takes it, and it must succeed on a strength. So it's, he's still going to take the 2d6 fire damage. Okay. Uh, and and it must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained for a minute. Yeah. So I assume he still takes the two d six. He just yep. isn't restrained. That's a five and a four, so nine. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you, as as Nora attacks and runs from the room, Redmond, you bear down on top of Theron. He brings the long sword up 
to repel your first attack. But as your blade bounces back, you've 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 done this enough before. You've trained with Nulra before. You you you've seen you've been parried. You keep the momentum going, and as you feel the the great axe kind of drifting from your hand, you bring it straight back up, and your elbow twists, and the blade uh, of your great axe slices him from the knee up along his thigh and just under his belly. And where it opens, the flames lick and hiss around the edge of the the axe. And you see him startled for a moment. He's completely caught off guard. And his eyes light up. And though the magic from the rune glows uh, on the, the pommel of your great axe, it's the fear that your eyes are drawn to. You've never seen this man afraid. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, bonus action. Um. Yeah. Um. Uh, one of your attacks with a weapon can deal an extra one d six damage on a target or hit. So I want to do another one d six. Sure. Oops. And that's a three. Okay. You um, as you uh, as you say this, uh, as you kind of as you as you see this. Sorry, rather. Uh, on his face, uh, he kind of he he's he kind of tries to shake it off for a moment. <sighs> Come on, lad. There's still a chance that you could make it out of this. You survived once before. Don't be a fucking idiot. And as he's staring at you, uh, you see that his hands grip the blade for a moment. And just when he thinks he's not noticed uh, a gap in your concentration, uh, a lapse in your judgment, oh. he jabs with the long sword. Uh, that is not good. Um, that is a two. Um, Bro, do, does not hit. That does not. Well, it's a two plus a five, so it's a seven. So the seven, I assume, still does not hit. <laughs> uh, no, uh, he <laughs> lunges forward, both hands gripped around the hilt of his long sword. And as he does, and as he jabs forward, one hand lets go. He reaches down for uh, a side pocket, does a 23 hit, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like... <laughs> he Just about. pulls a dagger from a side pocket and he plunges it right into your knee. Oh, uh, baby! Take... Take seven piercing damage. Okay. Um, and another 23 to hit. <gasps> yeah, it's... And another seven damage as he pulls the dagger out and stabs straight down again. He oh multi fuck! Multi attacks for three melee hits. Okay. Um, uh, oh, yeah. No. He, he... If only someone hadn't already stabbed Regiment very badly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't stab him. I slashed him actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Facts and stuff. Um, and as he as he does this. Um, the con save is a thirteen, correct, Umbra? Because some of the some of the gang are actually going to chance it to run in. It is. It is uh, con thirteen or take two d ten radiant. And do they take anything on a? Like, do they take half damage on a save? Because they would be inclined to think so. Two d ten failed or half as much on a successful one. Okay, so can you roll 2d10 for me? Because they, they rolled a 19. Ooh, another raid. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, eight, half to four. Okay. Um, and I will take that off of the chain, guys, just because they're closest. They were the ones running towards it. Um, they barrel uh, through uh, this, this group of... 
um, uh, of pirates. And as they um, as they do that, uh, several are they're they're blinded from the moonbeam and the the heat that radiates uh, from this magic scorches at them, but they're undeterred. They're they're more frightened of Ferran than they are of whatever magic this is. And they barrel straight in. And Mooney, you hear their footsteps right behind you. Oh, no. And, uh, okay, so there are six after following you into the house. Um, Two chain bars. Okay. And that is a... That's a dirty 20 to hit, Mooney. <sighs> Oh my gosh, should I, should I, should I, should I, should I, should I? Yes, yes. yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast shield. Okay. Oof. And that brings you up to... Uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. My AC is now plus five until... Oh no, wait, what did you hit me with? Uh, dirty 20. Oh, no, I'm not going to waste it. Okay. Um, that's four plus three, so it takes seven piercing damage. No, um, my just butt. as you reach the stairwell, you feel a um slam into your back uh, and the rattling of chains. Um, <gasps> this deck, and uh, that's a 15 to hit. Hit me, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna shield, so okay. bring my AC up to um. Where's my... It still wouldn't matter. It's still not going to matter. No, I can't. I can't waste it. Don't forget okay. your healing potions. Um, da, 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 okay. And uh, can you give me a strength saving throw as well? Uh, no. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, still, you still have to. Okay. It's a minus one. Oh, that's good. 18. Okay. Um, two of the two two pirates wielding the the that chain, Murphy being one of them, uh, have followed you straight into the house. And as they bar in, Murphy lets loose with uh, an attack, and it's the one that hits you in the back. And just as you swing round, Mooney defensively, uh, just to kind of see what it is, another chain this time with a long, uh, almost like a butcher's hook on it lashes forward it goes to wrap itself around you and bury itself in oh not again and you manage to just sort of sidestep around as he was going to grapple you with the chain not actually hurt you with it so to do that i have to choose whether i'm going to hurt you or capture you so i went for capture next time i won't make that mistake (laughs) um and as this happens and this is uh, this is thanks to those of you who helped raise money during this. I had said that we would be rolling for um, the cannon. I am going to still roll for the cannon. Okay. Now, I'm going to give... Will I give I, chat with the ones that decided this. I will either half the damage done by the cannon or I will roll the cannon shot at disadvantage to hit the boat. So everybody in chat, you're the, you're all the wonderful people that helped raise that money so very quickly and pushed oh my God. 20% of the goal. So do we want to roll at disadvantage or will I half the damage? Oh my God. Come on, make something go well for us, please. Anybody? <laughs> and <it's> like, oh, <laughs> that hacker who always flies in. <laughs> ban. ban her. Ban her. Um, I would be inclined to roll with disadvantage. Um, oh my god. Oh my god. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Um, and I tell you what, I will still... Yeah, I think that's the, the fairest way to do this. I think I will... 
yeah, we'll, we'll go. We'll do disadvantage. Oh, I don't um, know. Okay. Thank you, random person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Emma is zero N four. Yeah, who are they? Great name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a nat twenty. Okay, and just go On again. Roll. Mm -hmm. Disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really wish there was a way to capture this on camera. Um, just roll again. Nat one. Nat one. Nat oh. one. Say it with me now. Nat one. Nah, That's one, a twenty-two nah. to hit. No. Oh, God's sake. Not that one. I feel like we were never going to succeed. No, we were never. Hope they can swim. They knew it was coming <laughs> by sea the whole time. And like they're like immune to fire. <laughs> I thought the horses distracted them. I thought the fucking roof fell Kaiju in. Kaiju Chaos, showing up and watching a nat 20 get rolled first thing. You can blame mm. Kaiju Chaos. Uh, uh, I'm <laughs> this person is taking time out to come and watch our stream and here you are. Oh, I'm... I I'm um, going to watch this nice streamer and then immediately Reg just get heckled by the internet. <laughs> Reg was already dead and now his boyfriend's going to be immolated. So I do, if it actually, uh, I, I know they all booed and stuff like that, but there's a little part of me that's like, this is hilarious. Because um, <laughs> I'd like to re I'd like to re I'd like to remind you all of the decision that Umbra made only a few moments ago when he said, oh, the ship or Mooney. Um, and uh, so really. I have a potion. No. He, the ship Mooney does not have a potion. No, no, Maybe no. it does, Mooney. Just wait and see. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, a potion's not going to stop you from being blown to smithereens, is it? Well, don't forget the cannon was was is is, is fucked up though. Maybe it won't the cannon is bad. fucked up. I will say that was the... a very durable fuse to stay lit mm. with the roof of the shack it was in blew clean <laughs> off, isn't it? And you said the dragon head thing was all dented yeah, and damaged. It, it, it's almost like possibly she was the one that lit it um with thunder uh, damage yeah mm. uh in this world where i've let you all not die loads of times and there's a talking badge that sasses everybody yeah sure come for me with that point um, I'm having, i am having no fun in this fight i am having nothing here <laughs> killing my brother i'm getting Hurry nothing up. i want to go and die <laughs> kill me now <laughs> I want to cast magic missile <laughs> on yourself. Pass it off the cannonball. <laughs> There's an explosive sound. Oh, no. And Regmond, you you see Ferrin just kind of he's, he he drifts uh, like his head immediately snaps over to where the sound came from. And you can't help but kind of do the same thing just in that split sort of reaction moment. And he just starts laughing. And Nulra, that explosion rings loud, louder than the voice shouting, louder than the confusion. And as you stumble forward in a panic, you see Mooney out of breath, wounded, lying, or sorry, half lying against the, the banister of the stairwell, a large hook embedded in the wooden panel next to her, and a group of these pirates bearing, bearing down on the both of you. Regmond is not behind you. And Umbra and Diara, you turn and watch as a small hand reaches up towards the spout of the cannon, grab the lip and pull it straight down. <gasps> and Tilly shouts, Rebellion. <gasps> and the cannon goes off. Tilly, no! No! Tilly, yes! Go Tilly! And chapter 17, part two, ends there. Shut the front door. No! no! Oh! 
I hope Wolf comes in and just ruins everything. Fucking Zuko oh, Buckweed, is it? Big redemption <laughs> arc heading her. Love it. The girl, Love she never you. needed a redemption arc. She ah, was she did, yeah. always ah, good. She was a rotten tea. She was a nasty rotten tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my like God. Like all of your potion has soaked up into the rag of my clothes that I've put in there, and you have to yang, 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 suck it out of that. Oh, like vinegar material. in a chip bag. It'll be delicious. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God. High intense. I... Just want to thank everybody in chat who donated us tonight. Like we yeah, hit, yeah. Um, we've hit over twenty percent of our goal, and the event isn't even happening until on, until Friday and Saturday. Amazing, That's mental. Um, and you can thank them for being the ones that gave Tilly the the courage or the umph to to make that final. Uh, Move. What's mean final? What's mean final? She's fine. She's just we, sleeping. We are Rise of the Forsaken, uh, and uh, you have been watching Fiona as Nulra, James as Umbra, Eilish as Diara, Kat as Mooney, and Emma as Regmond. Um, and I'm Declan, and I've been your dungeon master. Um, we are the Eight Dungeon. We are a group of Irish tabletop role playing game enthusiasts who just love telling stories. Uh, uh, Keeping people in suspense, having a laugh, uh, killing NPCs, killing NPCs, um, and uh, yeah. Be outside of Rise of Forsaken, we also run a podcast called Romance in the Dungeon. We have uh, standalone adventures in the form of Saving Grace, and a few new ones coming on board. Uh, we stream very regularly here on Twitch throughout every month uh, with DM notes, map making sessions, one shot nights and date nights in between. Um, coming up this weekend, as I've already mentioned, we have a charity uh, fundraising weekend, uh, D8 Dungeon Drive 2022 with all proceeds going uh, to Planned Parenthood because we support reproductive rights for all. Um, you can find us everywhere at D8 Dungeon on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. And uh, we also have a wonderful Discord community that we would love to see you take part in and get involved. We talk about all the shows. We talk about, well, there's a lot of memes flying around the place. Uh, we run occasional games over there. Um, and there, it is just a lovely bunch of people uh, on the internet. One of my favorite places to hang out. Uh, we are back in two weeks' time for uh, chapter 18 uh, of book two. Um, Draher uh, is the title, and how do you uh, spell that? Draher? It's an Irish word. I'll send it to you afterwards. Um, like sister, brother, brother. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I we are going to decompress. We're going to talk about that session, and we're going to talk about things that have oh, happened yes, to make sure yeah. that everybody's okay. We are going to talk about that session. And well, uh, going to bed. Are, are we going to jump in and raid somebody? Are we going to keep? And thank you so much to, uh, I think it was yeah, Creepy Burnell and Zan for their raids in the stream. That was awesome. Um, and Kaiju, we won't boo you for and making Kaiju, our yeah. DM roll. <laughs> we won't uh, heckle you again. <laughs> but we can we can thank Kaiju for letting Tilly sacrifice herself for everyone. Mm -hmm. That was your doing, Kaiju. Yay. You killed that NPC. You killed that NPC. <laughs> no, they didn't. They saved a boatload of people. All that, Glenn. You saved a boatload of people. Your booze mm. fueled me. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I have found a kindred soul. Oh, thank you, Kaiju. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, who are we raiding? Who are we raiding? Let's figure it out, y'all. Who's that? Oh, owed? God, I don't have any energy left to figure things out. God. Finishing before eleven, though. Mm. Look at us. I was looking at the clock. This clock <sighs> that I can also use and read. Um... Oh, you and your clocks. Fuck off with your clocks. No. So proud of you, Dad. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lads! Thanks everyone for watching us.
we did you should have heard us before we started this by the way we were like cool let's strategize i'm gonna do this and you're gonna do that and none of it worked out we gotta go to the end first but we gotta watch out because she doesn't like us then we gotta go here and talk to these guys (laughs) oh no they're taking us straight to him i'm gonna (laughs) pretend that i want to talk to my horse and then we can get away with them and rendezvous <laughs> so I already just forgot her shit in her bag and she was allowed to go. <laughs> yeah, I forgot my shit in my bag. Wait, you lied to me. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like that. Clock move. I should have made you roll for deception on that. Oh, too late now. Actually, no, we did the whole thing from the top. <laughs> Everybody come back. <laughs> Do not know who these people are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick someone. I'm gonna pick whoever's streaming D&D right now. They yeah, look interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're we going with D&D. Table Story, whoever they are. Yay, Table Story. Table Story. Bye, pals. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. See you in two weeks. Aww. No, see you before then. Come to the charity stream. Give us money. Oh, yes. Give plant, plant Give charity money. Not us. Give charity not us. money, not us. <laughs> Specifically charity. <laughs> Even though Declan hates it. Okay, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>